Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is a video in my series for parents who have all of a sudden found themselves basically homeschooling after all the schools have shut down due to the coronavirus. I know a lot of you parents have been sent home, whether it's packets or e-learning or whatever. I'm getting the general consensus that people are freaking out, thinking that they have to replicate school at home. Now, I'm providing you with some tips to incorporate learning into everyday life, but please do your e-learning, please do your schoolology, I think that's what they call it here, and get that done. What these videos are for are to show you how you don't have to replicate school at home, but create an environment for learning in your home. If you're new here, my name is Rachel, and I am a mom of two boys. They are eight and six, so they're in second grade and kindergarten, and we're in our third year of homeschooling, but our first year homeschooling, both of them. And I'm a homeschool grad myself, turned out pretty good, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I think a lot of people think that this is way more involved than it is, which is why I'm providing some simple tips to create a learning environment in your home. Today's topic is probably one of my favorite parts of our homeschool, and not just our homeschool, but um, the time that I spend with my boys every single day, and it's reading aloud. This is something that we have always done just sitting them in our laps and reading them a book. And I know a lot of you already do that, but there comes a point when you're not always reading them picture books in your lap and you want them to maybe go the next step. Maybe they are not quite old enough to read chapter books, or maybe they are, but they're, they're not very uh, efficient readers quite yet. And reading aloud with your kids can be done at any time age and I mean that even if you have high schoolers reading aloud you know sitting and listening to someone read is amazing I love listening to someone read it, I love audiobooks and we're going to get to that here in a second but even if you have maybe someone who is a kindergartner reading something at a fourth or fifth grade level out loud to them is a really good thing because it, if you stick too close to their level, they're not going to really grow like you want them to. So exposing them to more advanced speech patterns and sentence structure is really good for them to get accustomed to hearing. And Sarah McKenzie wrote this book called The Read Aloud Family that I would highly recommend. Uh, you don't need that, you don't need this to read aloud, read aloud to your kids, but she makes some really awesome points in here and also busts some myths. Uh, I have found that with, with reading aloud to them, just my kids and I have boys, I know not all kids are, you know, the same or whatever, but in general, boys tend to be a little bit um, more fidgety and move, 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 move. That's how my boys are. And so I found that if I want them to sit and listen, uh, or if I need them to listen, I need them to be seated. Do I need them to be seated at this table? Not necessarily. I let my boys do pretty much whatever they want as long as they are in this area and they are not making more noise, okay? Uh, you can't see here, but I have a marker board right over here with tons of scribbles all over it. That's what Caleb was doing. He will draw scenes of whatever while I'm reading. Um, Legos, oh, you can't see. I have magnet tiles up there. Uh, blocks, uh, Duplos, Brayden loves Duplos, and he's getting into Legos as well. Uh, little, uh, we have these, I can't see, <laughs> we have these stackable little tiles. Uh, I'm just looking around, coloring books, whatever. They do not have to be sitting staring at you to listen. I know there have been times when I've been on the couch under a blanket and they are sitting on the carpet in front of me with coloring books and they're coloring and loving every second of it. I also know that sometimes my voice has just about had it. And so I have found a ton of success using audiobooks. I do not like to pay for my audiobooks. Sorry, audible.com, in my opinion, it's way too expensive. Uh, I love audiobooks for myself. I listen to them all the time while I'm doing housework. And I have found, I'm, I just wrote all these things down, uh, the Libby slash Overdrive app is through your public library and you can get all sorts of audiobooks there or ebooks even it's not just audiobooks if you don't have the book itself then you can get the ebook and read that aloud to them or get the audiobook through your public library using the Libby app 
The Hoopla app is also awesome. I struggle with it a little bit. It has um, more options as far as books, uh, more content, but the, the app just gives me problems. So I tend to stick with the Libby app and I find pretty much everything I need there. And I have, had, right now we're doing Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom, I believe. And I'll have them in here coloring while they're doing that. And that allows me to get some things done. I like, I'll sit here and do lesson plans or I can go, you know, run a load of laundry, that kind of stuff. And they're learning and they're listening. If you can go to your library, if your library is not closed, go to the library and get some things and get some, some, some actual books that you can read aloud to them. We actually have some checked out right now. A couple read alouds. We have Call of the Wild and White, ooh, White Fang, which I don't remember it being this thick when I was a kid. Side note. Um, and the other one we have is Miles Morales, Spider-Man. We haven't gotten into this one yet. Uh, but yes, yeah, so many options when it comes to that. Now, yes, you wanna make sure your kids are, are retaining the information. So a couple things you can do to kind of make this, instead of just a sitting and listening, uh, you can have them journal or draw what you're reading uh, because part of listening to a story being told and reading a story, you create this picture in your mind and you wanna encourage that and that creativity, actually getting it down on paper is awesome. Sarah McKenzie has, who wrote the Read Aloud Revival book, she has a podcast called the Read, I'm sorry, the podcast is called the Read Aloud Revival. The book is called the Read Aloud Family. Sorry about that. And she has a lot of good information on reading aloud to your kids or just to, with your family. Uh, also her website, which I will link all of this below, her website is great if you want book lists for certain ages and certain genders. Obviously anybody can read anything, but these are, uh, these are books that are best for certain ages. Uh, again, you can always go ahead. Like I have a kindergartner and a second grader. I can read whatever to them, but there are gonna be some things that are maybe too scary or whatever for certain ages. Like I would not read them The Hunger Games. I love The Hunger Games. I would never read that to them at least for a while. It'll be a while till I'm reading Hunger Games. Uh, but you get the idea. It shows you age appropriate book lists. And let me tell you, this is such an amazing thing that you can do for your kids. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed what I talked about. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you'd like to see all these videos that I have coming out uh, to you during this time when you are probably quarantined at home or social distancing. That's a new word or a new phrase for all of us. Hang in there, mamas. Uh, you, you might need some more food. You're probably going to need some more coffee. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real here. <laughs> but seriously, this, you could look at this as a gift that you have more time with your kids because you always hear, you know, you don't have someone on their deathbed saying, I wish I hadn't spent more time with my kids. And I promise you will not say, I wish I hadn't spent all that time reading aloud to them. So enjoy the time that you've been given, moms. I hope you enjoyed this video today and I'll see you again next time. Bye.